In the next couple of minutes, I'll take my character from this to this in just two steps. The first step is to UV unwrap, and I started with the kimono. I knew I could not have a seam at the back because of the design I had in mind, so I had to mark seams in the front edge that split in two. After marking the seam, I unwrapped it and changed the UV island to a perfectly rectangular shape using the UV squares add-on, and I repeated it with nearly every part of the character. I'm doing this because it saves space in the texture map, and it's easy to create details with just straight lines. I also added a color grid texture to see if there's any weird stretching or if my UVs are oriented properly. As you can see, there's no weird UV stretching on the kimono, and this is exactly what I needed for this part. Next, I moved on to unwrapping the armor. Firstly, I unwrapped and adjusted the UVs for the chest plate. And then in object mode, I selected all the other armor plates, and then I selected the chest plate at the end, and using Ctrl plus L, I chose copy UV maps. This technique let me stack the UVs of all the armor plates on top of each other on the texture map, saving quite a bit of space. And this was totally fine because all the armor plates shared the exact same topology, and they were all going to be identical in color and design. After the armor, I worked on the body. The body would use just three solid colors, one for the kimono, one for the OB belt, and one for the neck. I marked seams to unwrap the body like a cylinder, which is like 90% of what this model is made of, and I marked seams to separate the different colored parts of the body. I made the body's UVs quite small because they're just going to be solid colors. Moving on to the arms, again, I unwrapped them like cylinders. Uh, like the body, the sleeves are going to be solid colors, so I didn't mind this weird topology around the elbows, as they're not going to cause any issues for my purposes. The same is true for the lower arms, but I decided to separate the hands because I wanted to draw a little bit of detail on those. With the arms done, it was time to move on to the legs. The legs are, again, cylinders, and I marked seams to separate the cylindrical part of the legs from the feet and the hips. For the feet, I separated the front part from the sides and bottoms. I probably could have kept them attached, but it didn't matter so much for this model. And once again, rectangular UVs. The hat is exactly the same as any other cylindrical object so far, excluding the pointy top perhaps, and I don't mind the UV stretching. The hair is slightly different. I wanted to create a slight gradient on the bangs, so I separated the bangs from the rest of the hair. The ponytail once again is a cylinder. Once that was done, rectangular UVs for all the hair parts. Moving on to the head, I needed to draw the details of the facial features on this, so I had to be a bit more deliberate about how I unwrapped it. First, I marked seams around the perimeter of the face, so it would be easier to draw the details in the texture map. The back of the head is not as important because it's going to be covered by hair, so the UVs for this part is really small. I don't think I need to mention the ears because they're cylinders again. But once all the objects were unwrapped properly, I had to figure out a way to fit all the UVs into the texture map. This part is like solving a puzzle, trying to figure out where each UV fits the best, grouping similar colored objects together, and scaling them appropriately. Some of you may have noticed that I did not unwrap the katana, and that is because I actually forgot about it. I could not have my girl run around with an untextured katana, so I unwrapped it to the same texture map a little later in the process. But for now, here's what the UV map looks like before I was ready to move on to step 2, which is texture painting. To begin the texture painting process, I started by first changing the grid texture to a new image texture in the material properties. This new image texture is where I was going to paint my colors. I wanted to visualize the final colors first, so I painted a rough draft of the texture map within Blender, and only after that I exported the image to another program to add details and more refinements. To paint the colors, I first selected each part of the character, switched to texture paint mode, picked a base color I liked, and applied it to the mesh. I used the bucket tool to quickly fill in the part with the base color, and then using the brush tool, I drew the smaller details or color patches. Once again, this is just a rough pass for now. You can think of this phase as a sketching phase of a drawing. Blender's texture painting tools are great, but it wasn't the best for me. Regardless, it got the job done, and I was glad I could get it over with. 
While painting the textures, I kept switching between painting directly on the mesh and painting on the image texture itself that you see on the left. This is the reason why I chose to do it in Blender first, so that I can paint directly on the mesh and preview what the final version would look like. I painted some guidelines for the facial features in Blender, and I'm going to paint her kimono designs in another software. But that basically covers most of the texture painting process in Blender, and now it was time to take it into Krita and beautify it. So I saved the image texture, and I also saved the UV layout as PNGs. Then I imported those images into Krita, where I could make my textures look really pretty. I began by creating a new layer on top of my draft layer and started painting my favorite part of her design, the patterns in her kimono. It's a very simple tree branch design and I think it looks really nice with all the red flowers and petals. Let me know what you think of her design. I really enjoy painting this part a lot and if I ever decide to recreate this character in high poly, I plan on making the designs prettier and more delicate. Moving on to the face next because that was the next most complex thing in this model. With the help of the guidelines I drew in my draft layer, I drew the eyes and mouth in appropriate places. Later while inspecting in Blender, I noticed the eyes were a bit too high up for my liking, so I moved them down afterwards. Since the majority of her design was really simple with very minimal patterns, the painting process was a breeze. I picked colors from my draft layer that I created earlier so I did not even have to worry too much about what colors to pick. I had the UV layout imported as well, and this helped me create selections and avoid painting outside the lines, which in turn helped me make my overall texture map look tidier. I've mentioned previously that this is an original character, so I already have most of her design and color palette figured out. Like, I knew I wanted her hair to have a linear gradient towards the tips, and making my UVs perfectly straight made it quite easy to paint the gradients on her hair and have it look really smooth. I actually forgot the katana, so at this point I went back in and unwrapped the katana and made its UV straight again. I had more than enough room in my texture map for the katana, so I unwrapped its UVs to the same texture map and painted it. Once I was done with the painting, this is what the final texture map looked like. As you can see, there's only details for her kimono and her face, and not much anywhere else. Now that the texture map was looking great, it was time to set up a very simple tune shader. I've talked about this shader setup before, but I'll walk you through it again because it's really simple. In the material in Blender, I first got rid of the principled BSDF and added a diffuse BSDF instead. Then I plugged that into a shader to RGB and the color output of that into the material output. So far, not much has changed, but then I added a color ramp and set its interpolation mode to constant and suddenly I had a nice hard shadow look. From here, I could use my texture map to determine the base colors and the shadow colors of my model. To do that, I added a mix color node and connected the color ramp to the factor. And then I plugged my texture map into the B slot. This showed up in the lit parts of the model. Then I duplicated my mix node and in the new mix node, I plugged the texture map again but this time into the A slot, and I changed the blend mode to multiply. I changed the B color of the new mix node into this dark blue color, which would act as my shadow color. Finally, I plugged this mix node to the A slot of my main mix node, and set the blending mode to mix, before connecting the final output to the material output. And this is what she looked like with the material all set up. I was extremely happy with how she looked. Creating this character in 3D was a desire for a long time now and it was incredibly rewarding to see her take shape like this, even if it's low poly for now. Texture painting is really fun when your character comes to life like this and if you don't have something to paint onto, that can suck a little bit. So you may want to check out this video if you want to see how I modeled this little girl before she got her beautiful colors. I'll see you there.